It is always hard to decorate when you have a limited budget. However, with a bit of creativity and resourcefulness, you can transform any home into a cozy space without breaking the bank. In this video, we're flipping the script on budget decorating. I'm not going to tell you to buy this from Dollar Tree or that from Home Goods or other cheap decor just to fill in an empty space. This video is all about how you can work with your budget while still getting quality, long-lasting goods, the smallest changes for the biggest impact, and ways you can stretch your dollars further. There's no way to decorate on a budget if you don't know your budget. As boring as this sounds, it is important to know how much you can spend from the beginning instead of cutting corners halfway through your project. You don't want a space that feels disjointed because you put heaps of money into one area but hardly any into the rest to get it completed. It won't look like you've spent a significant amount of money anywhere. But how much should you spend on a home? This is a question that I get a lot and I really don't think there is a should. A better question to ask is how much are you willing to spend or invest to make the life you want at home? Or how much can you afford to spend to get as close to your vision for your dream home? You may not have a number upfront, but having an idea of how much you can spare each month is another way to approach it. Then, you have a monthly budget for home improvement spending. After a bit of research and planning, most people come to the realization that their budget simply won't cut it for everything they want in a project. That is where prioritizing becomes crucial. You have to figure out where you want to spend your money and what areas you're happy to spend less on. This is very personal and comes down to your personal values. For example, someone who spends a lot of time watching TV might be more inclined to spend big on a sofa, but much less on a floor rug, while someone who works from home five days a week might see value in splurging on a standing desk and ergonomic chair. Try to plan out which pieces have the most value to you and your lifestyle and rank them from most to least important. Prioritizing will also help you move forward if you get to the stage of your project where you have to cut back as you'll be able to easily get rid of less important aspects and focus your time and money into areas that will have the greatest impact upon the quality of your life at home. Once you've made a list of everything you want or want to change in your space, you need to break down the project into smaller chunks. Nobody furnishes their whole house in one go, so don't go trying to finish it all at once. Decorating can sometimes take years and that is totally okay. This is real life, not a reality TV show. I can guarantee you that you'll be happier with the outcomes if you don't rush your decisions. Here's how I like to do it. Firstly, break your project into rooms or zones if you have an open plan space. Then, break each room or zone into these two distinct stages. Stage one, getting together everything that you need immediately for the space to function. These are your key pieces like a bed and lighting. Stage two, collecting items that you want but don't necessarily need right away. Things like a mirror, sideboard, and art. I also like to prioritize my rooms or zones into two categories similar to the previous stages. That is firstly, the rooms or zones that you need immediately for your life to function. And secondly, the rooms or zones you want but don't necessarily need right away. Dividing your project into two stages will keep your budget under control and create a clear wish list of items or tasks that you can work towards in the near future. Sourcing secondhand or upcycling what you already own is one of the most budget-friendly ways to go about decorating. Unfortunately, lots of people give up on it as it takes so much time and can get frustrating. The trick is to have patience. If you're going down the upcycling route, take a look at any tired or worn out pieces that you already have and think about ways you can restore them. Do they need a fresh coat of paint? Can you reupholster them? Is there any way to re-varnish or stain the pieces? So long as a piece has a solid frame or foundation, it can be restored to look like new. It just requires some sweat equity. You can also take an upcycling mindset to purchasing secondhand items. Generally, secondhand items that need minor repairs are cheaper than one in pristine condition. If you see something that you like the shape or silhouette of, but not the fabric or color, think about how you can DIY it to suit your style better. When looking for secondhand items, I'll suggest visiting online and in-person auctions. Alternatively, visit your local thrift shop as you never know what gems you might find in there. Marketplace and Craigslist are other great resources. In fact, I have a free guide on how to find quality secondhand items on Marketplace which I've linked in the description box below. I also thought I'd mention that if you live in a big city, you can also check out the curbside, especially in more upscale neighborhoods. Most suburbs schedule their curbside pickups, so try to figure out what days people will be putting stuff out on their nature strip online. Also try to avoid riding the wave of the latest furniture trends. 
Choosing vintage items that I invoke is always pricey. Instead, look for unique pieces that have longevity, regardless of whether they're at the top of furniture trends at the moment. Plants are always a welcome addition to any home. They add color, contrast, and have an organic shape which adds visual interest to a space. Buying new oversized plants can be expensive, but there are actually many ways to decorate with them on the cheap, such as propagating them by getting cuttings from your friends, family, or neighbors. You can also look into your local nursery or garden center. They usually sell plants at a much cheaper price and there's so much variety to choose from. Smaller plants are typically cheaper than more mature ones, so you can always start small and watch them grow. If you're someone who struggles in keeping plants alive, I highly recommend you to check out Planta, an award-winning plant care app who is the sponsor of today's video. I personally have about 10 plants scattered around the house, not including those that are planted on the ground. With Planta, I can add all of them into the intelligent care schedule and get reminded when it is time to water, fertilize, clean, or repot them. This schedule is individually adapted to each plant's needs and also takes into account your local weather, daylight, and many other factors which makes it really easy to care for your plants. The best part is they also now support plants that are planted to the ground. So if you have a backyard or front porch like me, this feature comes in really handy. If you have plants that are not doing so well, like my lily peely here, Dr. Planta can help figure out what's wrong with it and set up a treatment plan for you. There's also other useful features like light meter to check if there's enough natural light for your plants to thrive, which I think is really handy if you're unsure on what type of plant to get, and plant identification, where you can simply scan a plant to get its name and care instructions. The app itself is free to download, so I highly recommend you to check them out. Thanks to Planta for sponsoring today's video. Alternatively, look into arrangements like branches or dried flowers. I always like to find one with branches that have a lot of movement, something with a lot of curve or elements that branch off. They always look much more elegant and bigger ones can make a really dramatic impact in your space. Other sensory experiences like smell and sound are just as crucial as aesthetics when it comes to creating a welcoming living space. Fortunately, Adding in sensory elements in your home often comes at a fraction of the cost compared to traditional decor items. By incorporating affordable scented candles, essential oil diffusers, or even freshly cut flowers, you can instantly elevate the ambience and mood of any room. Likewise, introducing soft background music or the soothing sounds of nature which are easily accessible can further enhance the sensory experience. Lighting is just as important or even more important than the decor and finishes you choose for your home, yet it is often neglected. So first and foremost, make sure you have multiple light sources spread out across your room. This should be a combination of overhead, ambient, task, and accent lighting. It may seem like a lot, but remember that upcycling and buying secondhand also applies to lamps and light fixtures. Plus, there are also endless choices of stylish and affordable lamps out there. Next. Make sure you get the correct light temperature. Homes generally require anywhere between 2700 to 4000 Kelvin, depending on the space and your preference. And remember not to mix different temperatures in a single room. This one does cost a bit, but investing in adjustable lighting such as dimmer switches or smart light bulbs is absolutely worth it. They let you control the intensity and color of your lighting, which allows you to create different moods and atmospheres without purchasing additional fixtures. With thoughtful planning and a little bit of resourcefulness, you can pull off good lighting on a budget. If you want to learn more about lighting, you should check out my video on how to light a space. The bigger the surface area, the bigger the impact it has on a room. So if you're in a strict budget, focus on things like rugs, curtains, paint, wallpaper, oversized art, and mirrors, as they all have a huge impact on your room. This doesn't necessarily mean that you have to spend more on them. Rather, I encourage you to get them right. This means having a rug that is big enough to actually function as a rug, or curtains that are hung high and wide with the right amount of fullness. I go through a lot of these mistakes in my biggest interior design mistakes video, and I encourage you to watch it if you haven't already. Shopping your own home is a brilliant budget-friendly approach to decorating that often gets overlooked. Most of us already have heaps of knickknacks, decor pieces, and furnishings scattered throughout our homes, waiting to be rediscovered and repurposed in a fresh new context. To kickstart this process, I'll suggest two things. First, 
Clear your shelves and surfaces of all existing decor items, creating a blank canvas to work with. A blank canvas provides an opportunity to reimagine your space without being constrained by pre-existing arrangements. Next, take inventory of all of these things. Go through all your things, whether they're tucked away in a drawer, hidden in a closet, or displayed on a shelf. I like doing this digitally by taking pictures of everything I own, as I find that this helps me better put things together. In this way, you'll gain a comprehensive understanding of what you already own, and also uncover hidden gems that have been forgotten or underutilized. This tip is the complete opposite of the previous one, but if you have furniture that is still in good condition, but you no longer want or need in your home, consider selling it on Facebook Marketplace, eBay, or Craigslist. You can also look into other online marketplaces to sell secondhand goods. Also don't think that these marketplaces are limited to vintage pieces. I've personally sold many IKEA pieces, modern home decor and appliances, and I've made thousands of dollars back from it. The best part is that you don't have to pay to dispose of them. You can have the buyer come straight to you to pick it up. In some countries, IKEA also has a buyback program, which can sometimes be up to 50% of the original price, which I think is worth looking into. This tip applies to everyone. It doesn't matter how big or small your budget is. Never, ever rush the process. If you're in a hurry to get your room done, you're bound to make some bad choices and mistakes. If there's a piece that you really like, be willing to save or wait for it to go on sale. Otherwise, keep hunting for what you want at a great price. The most beautiful spaces evolve with the owner over time. People who own these homes change or buy pieces slowly, and they all end up looking like they have been curated. Decorating on a limited budget doesn't have to mean compromising on style or comfort. With a dash of creativity and resourcefulness, you can transform your living space without breaking the bank. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the 9 biggest design mistakes and how to decorate a build your great home or apartment. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.